it's not B Day. On B Day, you do videos. What's up? What's up? What's up, guys? Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Birdhouse Rockstar. And we have to subscribe in five, four, three, two, one. Four. And subscribe. subscribe! Don't forget to hit that notification bell. And if you don't, you, you ain't, ain't popping. popping. That's good. That's good, guys. All right. Welcome to the channel. And welcome to, welcome the show. to the show. All right, guys. Listen, today we haven't done some video in a while. You know, we're trying to get the pups in line. They're having a good time today. You know, um, <clears throat> some days we, we come on um, and it's exciting. And some days we got to have a talk in the car that, that is not uh, for everyone to see. And, you know, one of the things we're trying to teach the girls about right now is gratitude. OK, these are some good little kids. These are some sweet girls. They have so many friends. Everyone loves them. But as a kid, you have to learn something, sometimes the hard way, sometimes through other people and and sometimes just through life experiences. Right. But one of the things I'm trying to teach the girls about is proper behavior and gratitude. OK, so that's the lesson for today. Proper behavior and gratitude. One of the things I was thinking about. Listen, listen, I wanted to bring the girls into this conversation because I not only want them to learn, but I want them to teach. One of the things I first want to talk about is, is, is proper behavior. All right. And I'm going to talk to the girls. I could have had this conversation in the car. We have it on camera. These kids need to learn it, too. Some of you adults need to learn it, but we're not we're not talking to any of these adults right now. This is a kid friendly show. Um, but if you are an adult and you get something from it, smash that like button and say, listen, that was for me. I needed that. Here's the thing about being a kid or being a person, but definitely a kid. My kid is nine and, and Bella is uh, seven. And, you know, it's nothing wrong with being a kid. Kids are going to make mistakes. First of all, just remember that you made mistakes as a kid. You make mistakes as an adult. Kids are going to make mistakes. Kids are going to test the limits. Kids are going to behave uh, mischief mischievously. I don't want to say badly because it's bad. It's just a blanket term. That's why we got to broaden our vocabularies too, guys. Um, but bad is just a term where, you know, they're not bad. It's just they're mischievous. And the thing about being mischievous is fun as a kid, but you also have to know when to stop and you have to know when not to do that. And you also have to know the proper ways to behave. So I like them acting mischievous sometimes, but sometimes they take it too far. They have to know what that is and they're trying to figure that out. What's too far? What's too far is school? What's too far at home? What's too far with their father and mother? What's too far with their sister? What's too far with their brother? What's too far with their family? What's too far with any, you gotta understand that. And that's what learning is about, guys. And that's why you fathers need to be in people's, in your kids' lives, okay? And in other kids' lives, all right? Fathers are so important in this method, in this process of, of coming of age. I don't know what I would have done without my father, all right? And my father wasn't as vocal. He just was very stern and serious. He was very serious when, when he spoke to us. I don't even remember, like, maybe a couple times laughing and stuff like that. Not like me, like we do a show together, <laughs> do a show with me. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like we have a good relationship. Not that I, I had a good, I had a fair and good relationship with my dad. He was a very fair man, good man. Like I wish to be like him. Only thing is with difference with me and him is that I'm more involved with my children, right? I'm more hands on with my kids. Um, and I have many more skills, right? I can do like sports and, you know, I know about investments and you know, parenting and all of this stuff. My, my point is, you know, my dad wasn't really into sports, you know what I mean? And um, very little few connecting points and the, the generational gap, right? So for instance, there's a generational gap here for sure. And we're going to discuss it. That's going to be part of our show is bridging the gap between the generations. I call it our generations. Uh, well, definitely the first part of the millennials legendary because we had an opportunity to experience life like my father did, but also experience life like they do because in the 80s it still was kind of like the old days but it was the new day too in a way as we got into the 90s with the internet and phones and computers but like growing up in the old days you know to watching me grow up in the 90s was very different from my father now me and Michaela, we use the same equipment i just i'm showing her how to use it but she was born into these things like the phone right or the internet you know, the internet's not new to them. Whereas though the internet to us was like, wait a minute, you can, what? You can look up stuff? Like it was interesting to us. To them, it's like, it's always been there, right? But my point of the, saying all that is, um, I have a lot more ways to connect with my children, 
right, than my father did, me. Um, you know, for instance, my dad didn't play basketball, right? Now, again, he was born in 1940. So you think about that, there wasn't really much basketball being played, right? My dad didn't go to college. I have a master's degree, right? So that's a big difference, right? It's an educational gap. It's a generational gap there. Um, but my dad always did the right thing. That's the one thing I learned from him. Uh, I learned how to be a man and I learned how to, I knew what the right thing was, guys. That's what I'm trying to teach my children. They're not gonna always do what I want them to do. They're not gonna always behave the way I think they should, but I give them a lot of latitude. You know, I don't really, I'll correct them in the car. Maybe sometimes I have to correct them on the spot, but I let them do their thing, right? And, but I know, I want them to know what the right thing is. And then they need to know when to do the right thing. Or the next right thing that they teach you, what was that, Frozen? Frozen 2. Right, what's the next right thing? You could have made mistakes. You could have done it the wrong way before. Yesterday, you could have done it wrong. What's the next right thing to do? And guess what? You know what about life, the thing you learn? It's so easy to get back on track. Literally doing the next right thing will get you back on track. It'll look like, it'll feel like you never did it wrong. But see, that first step is the hardest to do the next right thing. All right, so, what I'm trying to teach my kids is, it's okay, my girl right here, Bella, is seven, all right? She's figuring it out every single day. She's a good little girl, and she does the right thing pretty much most of the time. You can't say all, so you can't say all or never. You gotta take those words out of vocabulary in the first place, because nothing is never, and nothing is always, right? You don't always tell the truth. Now, you're working on that. But see, that's what I, I'm, I'm at the point where I'm like, I always want to tell the truth because, but see, you can always tell the truth when you behave properly. You don't have to worry about telling stories, right? Um, and it's, and it's, and it, and it leaves you with a sense of dignity, dignity and integrity when you do and comfort. You don't have to worry about anything when you're truthful. When you're telling the truth, you're just like, okay, everything's fine. Everything's going to be fine if you tell the truth. Just remember that. Um, and you do the right thing. Can't do the bad thing and then tell the truth. Things gonna be fine. It's not. Um, so, what I was saying was behaving mischief mischievously is natural for a kid, but you also have to learn how to balance, right? How to balance that with behaving properly, right? And what does that mean? It means behaving properly in school. And what does behaving properly in school mean? It means listening to your teachers and administrators, being kind and nice to your friends, and doing well at your programs, whether it's an academic program or sport program or any extracurricular program. Anything you do, anything that's worth doing is worth doing well. I want you to remember that. Everybody, type that in your chat right now. Type that into your chat. I want to see it. And then jam a one because that's important. Anything worth doing is worth doing well. If you want to do a play, do it well. What are you going to do a play and then not do it well? It's not worth doing. If it's worth doing, it's worth doing well. So what am I trying to say? If you're in school, focus on whatever you're focusing on. If you're in math class, I want you to learn math because that's why you have a math class. At recess, I want you to play. Play your heart out. Have fun with your friends. At basketball, I want you running up and down the court. Interested in the game. Present. Right? If you're in a play, I want you listening. Focused. Alert. Reading those lines like you're actually in the scene. With your friends, be kind, be nice, be gentle, give grace, all right? Everybody needs a level of grace because I don't know how that makes you feel, especially if it's our first time. And if I say something or do something that makes you feel awkward or not good, just know I didn't mean it to hurt you. And then, you know, if it happens again, you tell me, I don't like when you say that. That's cool. I'll be like, oh, I didn't know that. I, I just, that's how I talk. I, I, I'll be mindful. That's what a friend is, guys. That's why a friend is a very special term in our, in our language. You can't call everyone friend. Um, on, in this lifetime, friend is, is love. You love the person. You can't just say, as my friend, but you treat them poorly. It's not your friend. You just know who they are. It's not your friend. A friend is somebody who has uh, come into communion with you, come into fellowship with you, that you love them. They love you back. And you do the best by them, for them, with them. All right? These are 
these are things that people aren't teaching anymore. That's why we need fathers again, guys. We need fathers present in our lives because we need a masculine force to settle down, especially little kids, but also to encur encourage them to um, behave. And do the right thing. Um, and then the second part of that was gratitude, right? We're, we're talking about gratitude. And see, with kids today, see, when we were kids, it was different. Sure, could you be ungrateful? Yes. You're ungrateful little kids in 1584 and in, in, in all of time. But here's the thing, guys. It's so much easier to be ungrateful today because of so many things in the world and Amazon and China, right? <laughs> They're pumping out stuff. They're making more stuff than we can buy. Oh, you want a trinket? I'll get it. Oh, you want this from Target? Okay, good. All right, you want an ice cream or you want to go here? It's so easy to do everything. When we were kids in the 80s and 90s, even something simple as a, uh, I'm just trying to think of something that we, it's hard to get, it was hard to get, but it's so easy to get today. Whatever, right? I'm, I'm just thinking of a toy, a tool, a, It was fewer stores. There were, there, it, when we were kids, so think about this, you know how Amazon comes to our house? There was no delivery service. <laughs> there was no, uh, who, who does the deliveries? Anybody know? Can anybody name a delivery service? Obviously Amazon is its own delivery service now. But mail, US mail, so the United States, that was the only way, right? So you had to deliver things. If you wanted to send a package to a house from your house, well, first of all, you had to go to the post office, right? And then you had to go and pay and ask, you know, mail it. And it was, it was expensive and, and just time consuming. And it wasn't something you did every day. Like to send a package or to receive a package was amazing. So that's another, that's a good point. <clears throat> Simply receiving a package in 1989, let's say. I was how old in 1989, guys? I was seven. I think I turned, yeah, I turned seven in 1989. So I was Bella's age, right? 1989, I was seven years old. Um, <clears throat> um, where was I going with this? Oh, it was, it was, it was interesting to receive a package in 1989. You got a package in the mail addressed to you for some, from something for you. It doesn't really matter what was in it. It was just the fact that you got something in the, in the mail. And it was good. Today, the kids get packages daily. Amazon's at our door every single day, every day. Um, we even get our groceries delivered. So the kids really haven't really been to the grocery store, grocery the, the supermarket. Now they have, but it's been a while. I haven't been, so I know they haven't been. I used to have to go to the grocery store, I'm an adult, so I used to have to go to the grocery store to actually get things for me and my family. The kids have only been in with us, right, in that way. So, it's hard to appreciate things, guys. That's what I'm trying to teach you. Leave me a comment. Ha tap a, um, I want you to tap two ones. 11, put 11 in the comments if you, um, if you know what the word gratitude means, all right? And, 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 and also in the comments, let me know what, what part of speech is the word gratitude, all right? So, so here we are, we're talking about um, being grateful, being appreciative of things when you have so much of it. It's hard. It is it's very difficult to appreciate, you know, like for instance, I look at my car. Let's use my car for example. I appreciate it too because I practice, I have a gratitude practice. I don't let the new world get lost on me. Um, I want to make sure that I'm thankful for my car. This is a car. We, we use it every day as a family. We brought Michaela home um, from the hospital in this car. All right. All the kids, all the kids came, but Michaela's number one. But graciousness and gratitude um, is so important in this world because here's the here's the rub uh, about gratitude. You have to be grateful and thankful for the things that you have today, or you will not be able to be grateful for the things that you have obtained tomorrow. If you didn't say that. Let's say you had. A big um, 
I said you had a car like that. And you're like, oh, this car is okay, but I wish I had a new one. But what's the difference? First, where is the brand new car? I mean, it's not brand new anymore, but it's it's a good, made, well-made car, so it's been, it always feels new to me anyway. But then you get the new car. So are you happy with that now? No, I want a bigger one. Well, no, I'm just saying that the way you're grateful for things, if you're not grateful for what you have, you can't be grateful for what you get, right? Let's say you get a big house and you're like, oh, this is great. And then a year later, you're like, oh, I think I want a bigger house. But you got a bigger house. But you want a bigger one now? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I kind of do. I just want a bigger one, you know? Okay. So, so the point is, it's a never ending story when you're not happy with the things that you have today. And then guess what? Gratitude feeds on itself just like envy does because if you're grateful and thankful for the things that you have today and then you work and you get more then guess what you're going to be even more grateful for what you have tomorrow that you worked for and see things that you've worked for feel so much better anyway you're like wow this is great and the, the pride that you take in your work and in your possessions and things will be so much it'll be so full you won't know the feeling. You would be like, wow, it's amazing. It's an amazing feeling when everything that you have, you've worked for and you've earned. And no one can take them from you. And you feel confident in them. So anyway, <clears throat> I'm going on and on. I'm talking about two things today. Um, proper behavior and gratitude for kids and adults. If you're finding something from this, jam that like button, okay? Jam the like button anyway. Can I get uh, a little subscribe action? Listen, subscribe. I know we had a serious conversation today, subscribe. guys. Please. Hit that notification bell. You want to know when we drop a new video, okay? Hit that like button. And you know what I like more than all of that? Oh, I can't say I do like more than all, but I do like comments. Leave those comments, guys. Leave in the comments something. Below. Below. <laughs> all right, kids, listen. We're almost pulling in. We're coming in. Can we get some affirmations quick so we can close the show down? Do the, yes. All right. Good work. Let me get some pledge allegiance before this light turns green. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. God bless America. That's good work, kids. I like it. I like it. And you know what? This is a different show, but it's a, you know what? That's the point of the show. We got to give the audience something to work with right a full show sometimes we're going to be funny sometimes we're going to be serious sometimes we're going to be uh teaching right and you know what we still we still going to follow the format actually bella do you have a weather report for me yes i do all right can i have it so um right now it is i'll say like 62 degrees and it's going to warm up, so t today is going to be a gorgeous day. Oh, yeah. It's going to warm up to like 80 or 70 degrees. And um, you know, you don't really have to wear a jacket. But if you do right now and you feel cold, you can wear a jacket. So, I hope you have a great weather report. Awesome. Yes, I love it. Thank you. That's right. Slow. That's right. Well, it just means that it's it's cautioning you that that the light's about to turn red, right? And yes, you should slow up. So basically, you see how the light's green. That's letting me know that all things being clear, you can you can proceed through the intersection safely. All right. That's why we have human drivers, guys. Now they're trying to get uh, driverless cars. But uh, but the point is, guys, just because the light's green doesn't mean just keep, you got, yeah, everybody thinks, oh, I can go through the intersection. No, that means that you should proceed safely through the intersection, 
right? Um, yellow means, well, you know, again, that caution. That's exactly what yellow means. That's why it's not red. It means, listen, you can't have a situation where the light turns from green to red because then everyone will be confused. Like, oh, it was just green. I'm riding and it's just green. Now it turns red. No. It turns green and it's green to let you know you can go through. It turns yellow to let you know, hey, 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 light's about to turn red. If you haven't already started through the intersection, don't start now. That's what it's really trying to tell you. And, and generally yellow is a caution light anyway. So if you see a yellow light flashing, it's letting you know to be careful, guys. All right? What, what about blue light? There's no uh, uh, no, 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 blue light is, it, it, again, it's a lot of different colors, right? And that's what we have different colors for to let you know um, what's going on. Now, the blue light, you'll see a blue light in public places sometimes, like in a train station, is letting you know where you can go for help, all right? So a blue light will usually let you know where you can go for assistance. Let's say you're in the subway. That's why we're trying to teach you girls so many things. You girls haven't even been in the subway before, right? Now you've been to the train station, which is similar, but the subway is a train that runs underground that takes you from place to place. And it's dangerous, right? And people are down there and the train's down there, you might need help. So guess what? The blue light lets you know where you can call for help. Oh, look who's there, it's Mr. Ruddle. Mr. Ruddle, how you doing, man? doing great the whole crew's here all four all four how you doing Hello. <laughs> oh yeah yeah i watched half of them they won yeah yeah they were winning big yeah oh good good we'll be in touch man yeah you, you got it. yeah you too i thought blue light means like to go very fast like the roads all clear uh, no blue lights on the road. These are blue lights in the, uh, like, in a, like I said, it's in a public place. Anyway, guys, we got to close the show down because we're here. And, um, well, I mean, how do we close the show down? Thanks for watching, guys. We love you. Appreciate you Bye. watching. Bye-bye. We'll see you tomorrow. It's and a gorgeous day. Subscribe. So, please subscribe, guys. I mean, come on. What, you want to watch us every day? You got to subscribe. Hit that notification subscribe. bell. Um, that's all I have. We'll see you later. Bye. <laughs>